Convicted felon Donald Trump yet again publicly snapped on the Fox propaganda network for perceived disloyalty for the cardinal sin of daring to interview a Democratic governor. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have several clips to look at in this video, but I want to start with this. Donald Trump is yet again furious with the Fox propaganda network for perceived disloyalty. He ranted about them on Truth Social, and he said, Why did Fox News put up Tim Walls, governor of Minnesota, where I am leading? They make me fight battles I shouldn't have to fight. He's upset that the Fox Propaganda Network interviewed a Democratic governor on their network, which is interesting because I thought Donald Trump was the leader of the pro-free speech party, the pro-debate party, you know, the facts don't care about your feelings party. Why would he have any issue with, you know, supposedly a nonpartisan principled news network interviewing a member of the Democratic Party, especially when that person is a governor in an election year. Really interesting. It seems to suggest that as far as Donald Trump is concerned, the Fox Propaganda Network is a right-wing propaganda arm which should be devoutly loyal to him and his party alone. That would seem to conflict with how the Fox Propaganda Network presents itself publicly or claims to be publicly. Really interesting. It kind of reveals quite a bit about Trump and Fox, but with that in mind, I do want to play some clips from that interview in question. So Tim Walls is the wildly successful Democratic governor of Minnesota, and he appeared on the Fox Propaganda Network and was interviewed by Dana Perino, former Republican press secretary to President Bush and Bill Hemmer, again, another Trump sympathizing Republican, even though they're supposedly part of the hard news side of Fox. So I'm going to play some of these clips and we'll unpack them together. This is what triggered Donald Trump. There is a certain irony to saying that Donald Trump is bad for democracy when it, it looks pretty obvious Look, that the Democratic get... <laughs> Party leapfrogged the entire Democratic system, and they did it in about 24 hours publicly. Look, the process has always been there. I, I welcome, if, if, if Sean or anybody wants to become a, a DNC delegate, you're welcome to. But what I know is... Democrats are ready to move when the situation warrants it. Look, it doesn't matter convictions. It doesn't matter failed policies. Republican Party stuck with Donald Trump. He's yours. You've got him. Welcome to it. Democratic Party can make our decisions. We pick our nominee. Look, if you don't like it, don't vote for it in November. But I think the American public are going to see they knew that this uh, administration was delivering. We knew that as far as economic numbers based against global numbers, America's in a far better shape. And we also know that a foreign policy that respects our alliances not cozying up to dictators like Putin and Orban is not the way to go. How about so, this one, Governor? Uh, you know, J.D. Vance, yeah. mind, your own, mind your own business I, I is you. what I would tell them. We're, we're, Why we'll doesn't... <laughs> so again, you can tell these people are in the bag for Trump, right? They're, they're asking. It's not like they're asking softball questions. They're asking pretty sharp questions, perhaps even dishonest questions, which are designed to advantage Donald Trump. You know, the prevailing complaint against Donald Trump from the anti-Trump coalition is that he's an authoritarian threat to democracy, which he just objectively is based on the things he's done, the things he said, and the things that he says he wants to do if he becomes president again. Now, uh, you know, Fox is trying to sanitize Trump yet again, and they're trying to flip the script and say, actually, no, the Democratic Party, they're the real threat to democracy because President Biden uh, withdrew from the 2024 election. Just want to say that there is nothing by law or legal ethics or even ethics in general which precluded President Biden from withdrawing from the nomination before the DNC actually even convened. President Biden was the presumptive nominee, but the nomination hadn't been conferred. And quite frankly, let's be very clear, even in a timeline where President Biden was the nominee, accepted the nomination. If he chose the next day to resign, uh, withdraw from the race, that was his prerogative. There's nothing in the rules or in the law or anything that prohibits such a thing. Candidates have the right to withdraw their name from consideration from the nomination. It happens. The Fox Propaganda Network, however, is upset by this, and they see this as an opportunity to try to hit Democrats because they wanted President Biden to remain in the race because they perceived him to be a weaker candidate against Donald Trump than Vice President Kamala Harris. So it's it's kind of this dual track motivation, right? They they want to try to blunt one of the most damaging and valid critiques against Donald Trump. They want to diminish it, and then they want to try to weaponize it against Democrats. But let's be very clear. President Biden, again, had every legal and ethical right to withdraw his name from the race. And quite frankly, people within the Democratic Party, be it delegates, be it voters, be it power brokers, be it elected officials, whomever, they had every right 
to try to press for President Biden to withdraw if they thought that that was in the best interest of the party. Nothing illegal, nothing unethical by any stretch of the imagination. And hearing the Fox Propaganda Network complain about this when their guy, their cult leader, actually tried to stage a coup, actually engaged in insurrection, tried to steal a free and fair election unlawfully and unethically, uh, the, the, the complaints really don't uh, have much substance to them, right? At the end of the day, Donald Trump is just objectively a far greater threat to democracy than Democrats on their very worst day, and there's nothing they can do to pretend otherwise. Another clip from Tim Walz's appearance on the Fox Propaganda Network. Chris has to make a choice now. She's looking for a running mate. We can put up on the board here the people who are possibly being vetted. Are you being vetted to be a vice presidential choice for Kamala Harris? Look, I spoke with the vice president. I'm not going to get into exactly what we uh, spoke about, but we have the same values. We believe we can win in the Midwest. I think what I'm most proud of is if you look at those folks you put up there, they're Democratic governors. That's because Democratic states are creating jobs. Democratic states are welcoming. Democratic states are protecting those personal freedoms, those things like reproductive rights, uh, your ability to be able to marry who you wish to marry, those types of things that are basic American values. And so uh, my case on that is I will do what's ever necessary to make sure that those values are front and center. Tim Waltz, thank you for your time. So listen, Tim Waltz is a very uh, gifted communicator. He has an excellent record that we, uh, I'm going to get into here in a second because he's not, the, he's not done this. I, I should say he's, this is not the first time he's done this. He's done this before in multiple interviews. He's made the case that Democratic executives just deliver better results for their constituents, including conservative constituents, than their Republican counterparts. And I do want to get into that. But speaking of Democratic governors and speaking of people who are uh, rumored to be considered by Vice President Harris as a potential running mate, Andy Bashir, uh, who used to be my governor when I lived in Kentucky. He's a Democratic governor, wildly popular, despite the fact that Kentucky is a deep red state. Uh, and this is what he had to say about J.D. Vance and Donald Trump. And I thought it was a pretty good line and worth including here. J.D. Vance is a phony. He, he's fake. I mean, he first says that, that Donald Trump is like Hitler, and, and now he's acting like he's Lincoln. I mean, the problem with J.D. Vance is he has no conviction, but I guess his running mate has 34. It's a pretty funny line. Donald Trump, of course, having 34 criminal convictions as a result of uh, committing felonies in New York. Uh, and so let's get back to Walls here for a second, though. So Walls has some advantage that that Governor Bashir does not which is that Governor Bashir is up against a Republican supermajority in the Kentucky State Assembly, who, which have done everything in their power. I mean, these, this is the state of Mitch McConnell, right? And so uh, Kentucky Republican politicians are very much in the Mitch McConnell vein. They're very cynical. They're bad faith. They engage in double standards, left, right, and center. And they've done everything in their power to stymie Governor Bashir's ability to run the state. They have not been totally successful, but they've been more successful than you might think because of that conservative supermajority. Governor Walls of Minnesota, on the other hand, he enjoys a trifecta control in the sense that the Democratic Party has basically its majority controlled both. They have the governor's mansion, they have the state legislature, they have the state high courts as well. And as a consequence of this united government, they have been able to accomplish an enormous amount for their constituents. If you go to Governor Walls's website, uh, they have this listed out. Governor Walls and Lieutenant Governor Flanagan took office in January 2019 on the promise of one Minnesota, the vision that while we are not all the same, we are at our best when we work across the lines of difference to improve the lives of all Minnesotans. Facing unprecedented challenges, Governor Walls and Lieutenant Governor Flanagan led with a focus on investing in the things that matter most, children and families, economic opportunity, health and safety, and strong local communities. The governor and lieutenant governor continue building on the accomplishments of their first term to improve lives of Minnesotans across the state, and they have them broken down. Historic investments in education. Walt signed a $2.3 billion education budget into law, the single largest investment in public education in state history. And they also ensured students receive free breakfast and lunch at school. That's huge. It's empathetic, it's compassionate, and it's disgusting that Republican politicians would dare oppose it, which of course they did. Governor Walls established reproductive freedom and gender affirming care as fundamental rights in Minnesota. Excellent. Protecting Minnesotans. Uh, Governor Wall signed a bill into law investing $300 million for public safety needs across the state. This funding is helping cities address their most urgent needs to keep Minnesotans safe. Governor Walls also took meaningful action to protect communities from gun violence, signing a red flag bill and expanded background checks into law. Expanding workers' rights uh, to make Minnesota the best state for workers. Walls established paid leave, ensured paid sick days, banned non-compete agreements and increased protections for workers in Amazon warehouses, construction sites, hospitals, nursing homes, and public schools. 
and so on and so on and so on. It's it's a, a quite a wealth of accomplishment. And he talked about it, or there's this article rather from CBS News um, describing a speech that he gave. Uh, it's a state of the state address, and this was back in March. Okay. Governor Walz, during his State of the State address on Tuesday, touted his party's achievements last legislative session under total DFL control. I think it's Democratic Farmer Labor Control. I think that's the full name of the the party, DFL control of the state capitol, and urged lawmakers to continue to build on that work as the clock winds down. Um, And so he says, quote, most of the time, politics is incremental, frustrating, sometimes gridlocked altogether. But every once in a while, you get an opportunity to make a whole lot of progress in a short amount of time. So. The reason I think this is important is, again, you have to remember that, you know, the notion is that states are laboratories of democracy, right, which I suppose in some cases are true. And and they're little microcosms of the federal government, right? <clears throat> Every state government, all 50 states are a mirror image of the federal government. They have three branches. You have the executive, which is the governor instead of the president. You have the state legislature, which is usually could be unicameral or bicameral legislature in uh, you know, Kentucky State Assembly, for example, or um, State Congress, State House, um, State Senates. And you also have courts of last resort, the high courts of, of each state, Supreme Courts. And what governors are able to do or what Democrats are able to do when they have trifecta control is really extraordinary. Walls is an example. Um, Gretchen Whitmer in uh, Michigan is another example. This is why it's so important, particularly in today's polarized times, to not elect a Republican, right? I mean, the Republican Party has continuously demonstrated, especially since Donald Trump took office and you know, really marched down that escalator, they've devolved into an authoritarian cult of personality, not even really a principled conservative opposition party. Those people are called rhinos, and they've been expelled or sidelined from the party altogether. I mean, my God, look at Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger, Mitt Romney, people with very robust conservative principled policy positions, right? And they've proven it, just with, not just with rhetoric, but also how they vote. But because they dare criticize the cult leader, Donald Trump, they have been excommunicated effectively from the party, which is why Mitt Romney isn't seeking re-election. Um, the bottom line is that Republican politicians can't be trusted with power. They suck at wielding it. They're really good at culture war nonsense. They're really good at ginning up fear and fomenting chaos, but they are terrible at solving problems, which is why federally what we've had is Republicans come in, make a mess, Democrats get elected, clean up the mess, but cleaning up the mess is painful. People get mad, and so they elect a Republican. The Republican makes a mess. People get mad at the Republican, elect a Democrat, and so the process repeats itself. We have here is an opportunity to break that process. Donald Trump created a mess after inheriting a fantastic or relatively fantastic situation from President Obama, and then in four years, he wrecked the country, due in large part to his mismanagement of COVID, but also you know, again, the authoritarian impulses he had, the attempt to steal a free and fair election, the racism, the xenophobia, uh, just giving vent to the very worst thing, a $2 trillion tax cuts for the rich and the people who need it the least. And President Biden and the Democrats came in and it was painful and it's incomplete, but they've made enormous progress with respect to uh, resolving the issues created by Donald Trump and the Republicans. But it's been painful. It's been uncomfortable. There are people who are fed up. There's an anti-incumbency uh, you know, sentiments sweeping the world, not just the country, but the world. But we have an opportunity to show what back-to-back Democratic administrations can do when you don't have a Republican squeezing in between Democratic administrations and making more of a mess, which is why I would encourage you, if you're an eligible voter, be sure to vote Democrat in the upcoming election and think of what a unified control of government under Democratic rule would look like. And you need only look at states like Michigan, Minnesota, and whatever actually delivering results for working class Americans, liberal and conservative alike. Let me know what you think in the comments.